Hey everybody, um, welcome back to my series on the films of Steven Soderbergh. Uh, I am uh, reviewing his films in pairs. He's a director I admire uh, greatly. And I would like any of you who uh, would like to uh, make a video of your own on one of his films to post as a video response to mine. I'm putting together a playlist of not only my own videos, but everyone who uh, does video responses, and so they'll all be in one place. The link to that is below. I also wanted to mention that I'm on a collab channel called the Movie Reviewers 100, and we are looking for a couple new reviewers uh, to um, make videos for us on Tuesday and Wednesday. And so if that interests you, uh, the link to that channel is below. Um, I would recommend posting a video response with your own review on anything, pretty much, uh, to one of the current reviews, or send them to uh, Big Al1982, who heads up the channel. Um, now, uh, the two movies that I'm going to be talking about today of Soderbergh's uh, seem like a pretty natural fit, um, because they both came out the same year. Aaron Brockovich was released in the early months of 2000, and Traffic came out in December of that year, which means they both qualified for the Oscars the following spring of 2001, and they did in spades. Both these movies were nominated for Best Picture, both of them were nominated for Best Director, and both Julia Roberts of Aaron Brockovich and Benicio Del Toro appeared in Traffic, um, were uh, Academy Award winners, uh, which was pretty amazing. Um, Aaron Brockovich is, of course, based on a true story. Uh, the screenplay is by uh, Susanna Grant, uh, and it's about a woman named Aaron Brockovich who was uh, having a hard time supporting her three kids looking for work, really just eking out a living. Um, she was in a car accident, and uh, she wanted to get a settlement from the apparently wealthy doctor driving a Jaguar who hit her, um, but that didn't work out. So instead, she um, talks her way into a job at the office, the law firm uh, that was representing her, uh, which is uh, headed up by a guy named Ed Masry. Um, Erin Brockovich uh, basically was just doing filing work. She didn't have a law degree. She really didn't have a, a whole lot of education. She was just basically doing a lot of grunt work. And in the course of organizing and doing a lot of research, she came across some interesting uh, uh, documents involving people's uh, health issues um, and blood tests and doctor's visits. Uh, while they were being uh, offered uh, money for their homes by a company called PG&E. PG&E had an industrial plant uh, in the town of Henley, um, and basically uh, all these people uh, sort of had uh, uh, health problems relating to uh, their spines and uh, liver failure and uh, a lot of tumors. Uh, their kids were getting sick. Um, and what uh, it was determined that the um, uh, company had been uh, inadvertently leaking uh, a chemical called hexavalent chromium into the town's water supply, into the groundwater. Um, they weren't properly lining uh, their uh, disposal pools uh, so that the chemical did not seep into the ground, and as a result, a lot of people were getting sick. Um, so the problem became, how do they uh, connect um, the diseases and the health issues to PG&E? How did they definitively show that PG&E is responsible? That not only did they knew that this was happening at the plant, but also that they knew it was happening in the corporate office. So that's sort of the big issue there. Um, but uh, Aaron Brockovich's strength is that she's basically, she's not a lawyer. She's very personable and she's also very persistent. And she goes around door to door to a whole bunch of these people living in the town and basically explains the problem and gets them to join up uh, in the lawsuit. Um, it's funny because, uh, you know, Julie Roberts, of course, is a very, you know, charismatic person and she's got a really big personality and, you know, is friendly and everything. And that translates well to this character. Um, I, you know, as I was watching this movie, I was kind of reminded of Steven Seagal movies, of all things. <laughs> Steven Seagal, in, in some of his earlier better movies, I don't really like him as a, a person or as an actor, but I like his fighting style, which is basically to face off his opponent and stand kind of still and then sort of move a little bit closer and a little bit move a little closer, not take up a fighting stance, but just keep his arms at his, side, at his sides and move a little closer and a little closer and all of a sudden, oh, and he lashes out and bam, the guy is down. Well, Aaron Brockovich has a similar style. She will listen to people, and she will nod, and she will go, mm-hmm, yes. And the people explain to her, well, I don't think PG&E was responsible for all my health issues because of this and this and this, and they told us this and this. And Rockwich will go, yes, okay, yes, good, I understand that. But see, P 
PG&E also did this, this, and this, and this, which means that they are responsible. And she just, you know, she just, you know, lays out the competition. There's just no stopping her. Um, she goes around. This is, of course, a real person, but she, you know, eh, obviously she knows a lot about how to deal with people on a social level, which makes her um, a better person to deal with uh, than the lawyers that uh, ordinarily would uh, be talking with these people. Um, the lawyers really are, are no match for her at all. You know, she uh, she'll just hit them. You know, she just she just knows exactly what to say and how to say it. Um, some of the uh, people, um, they get overwhelmed with a lot of their cases and a lot of the people that they're representing. So they bring in a more uh, a law firm, you know, with uh, more resources, more money. But then the lawyers at that firm, they want to go and re-interview everyone just to make sure that, you know, there were no gaps in Aaron's uh, research, as they say. <laughs> and none of the people in the town want to talk to them. You know, they like Aaron. They want to talk with Aaron. What's going on here? You know, so really she's sort of like their secret weapon, uh, as, as they called uh, in the film. Um, the, um, the lawyer, Ed Masry, who heads up the firm, is played by Albert Finney, and he's... Um, He's been in a couple of Soderbergh films since then. Uh, he's really great. Um, Julia Roberts has never been one of my favorite actresses, but I, I will say she has, you know, <laughs> a very appealing personality. And it's just, you just, it's hard to say no to her. I imagine it would be very, very hard to say no to her. And, of course, it's hard to say no to this character as well. So it's a great fit. And, um, yeah, there was a number of very great people nominated for Best Actress this, that year, including uh, Gina Rollins, I believe. I'm, I'm probably getting that name wrong. Um, the, um, the older actress who was in Requiem for a Dream. I know I'm getting that name wrong. It's not Gina Rollins. Uh, she, but that actress was nominated for Requiem for a Dream, and a lot of people thought she totally deserved it. But, you know, Julia's you know, such a huge star, and everyone likes her so much, and it was pretty much a lock. So uh, that's one of the important reasons why she got it. Um, now, uh, Traffic, of course, came out a little while later, and as it happens, um, Albert Finney is also in this movie, uh, in addition to a number of other people who've been in um, sort of movies before. Louis Guzman, who is in uh, Out of Sight, and the line is in it. Don Cheadle, who is in uh, uh, Out of Sight, is in it. Um, and uh, strangely enough, Benjamin Bratt. Benjamin Bratt was seeing Julie Roberts at the time. They might have been engaged, I'm not really sure, but... Uh, <laughs> um, I'd imagine uh, she, you know, Julia convinced uh, Soderbergh to uh, meet him and, and give him a part in the movie. He's only in one scene, but uh, it's a huge cast in this movie. Um, the main character, more or less, is Benicio Del Toro, although it's very much an ensemble movie. Uh, he is probably the most prominent character. Um, he, the movie starts with him and it ends with him. And there's a lot of other characters. Uh, there's a, uh, a judge played by Michael Douglas who's just been appointed as the head of the uh, um, war on drugs uh, by the president and chief of staff. Uh, for the United States. Um, you have the cops played by Don Cheadle and Luis Guzman. Uh, they arrest a uh, low-level uh, distributor played by Miguel Ferrer, uh, and uh, they want him to testify against his boss, um, who's played by Stephen Bauer, and Stephen Bauer is married to Catherine Zeta-Jones' character. Now, Catherine Zeta-Jones actually was pregnant at the time that this movie was made, visibly pregnant, and although the character wasn't written that way, she thought, hey, how about I just play the character pregnant? You know, that would raise the stakes more. And Soderbergh goes, hey, good idea. Um, this was um, the first movie, uh, as, I, as I can tell, that he did all the camera work himself, Soderbergh. He did it under an alias, Peter Andrews, and he's done that on practically all of his movies since then. He's also edited um, a few of his movies himself under a pseudonym, but that wasn't until Solaris a little bit later on. Um, now, I said that I rescreen these movies, uh, and I, I like Aaron Brockovich. I think it's a decent movie. It's very, very straightforward in its style. Unlike Out of Sight and the Limey, which have a lot of jumping around in time, Aaron Brockovich is very, very straightforward. Um, and so the rewatchability factor is not high with that movie, not for me anyway. Whereas Traffic, I appreciate a heck of a lot more now than I did then. Um, it's very, very complicated movie. Uh, it doesn't jump back and forth in time, but it goes between a lot of different storylines. And this is helped, of course, by the uh, shooting technique that he uses, or it might be post-production technique using filters. Um, the scenes that take place in Washington, D.C. and Ohio, closely involving the Michael Douglas character and his wife, Amy Irving, and his daughter is played by Eric Christensen, who is, happens to be a drug addict, um, are, are, are largely blue-filtered shots. Uh, the shots look blue for the most part. Um, 
and the uh, scenes involving Benicio del Toro. Uh, uh, he is a Mexican cop. He has a partner, uh, and he gets involved with a, um, uh, a general, uh, General Salazar, uh, who is uh, working for the government, but he's also working for drug dealer, drug dealers, a uh, Mexican cartel. Um, those scenes are largely uh, shot through yellow filters, so each sort of storyline has its own distinctive look. And then you have the Don Cheadle, Louis Guzman, and Catherine Zeta-Jones storyline, which is shot in pretty much regular color. Um, yeah, a lot of really good actors. I couldn't believe how many actors I recognized in this movie. Clifton Collins Jr., I didn't even recognize him at first. He wears his sunglasses throughout the whole movie, uh, but he takes them off once in a while, and I go, wait a minute, that isn't Clifton Collins Jr., and I had no idea he was in this movie. Viola Davis is in this movie. Uh, James Pickens Jr. plays the chief on Grey's Anatomy. He's in this movie. Um, yeah, it's just a, a, you know, just an incredible cast full of a whole bunch of people that I didn't know then, but I know now. So, um, and I find the, uh, the storylines uh, a lot more involving and interesting, and it can make the connections a lot more easier. I guess I'm smarter now. I don't know. Or maybe I'm doing less drugs. I don't know. But um, <laughs> I, I enjoy this movie a heck of a lot more now than I did then. So it's definitely risen uh, on my uh, list of favorite Soderbergh movies to a, a higher position at this point. Um, so yeah, anything else I need to cover there? Um, it's written by Stephen Gagan, uh, a, screen, uh, a screenwriter who went on to be a director. Uh, he has directed a couple of films. Um, the one that I remember offhand is Abandoned with um, uh, Katie Holmes and Benjamin Bratt, actually, as it turns out. Uh, and uh, of course, he also shot this movie. Uh, uh, well, uh, he, didn't, he didn't do the shooting on Aaron Brockovich, not as far as I can tell, but on Traffic, he started using the Peter Andrews uh, pseudonym and started shooting his own movies, and he's done so since then. He hadn't switched to digital at this point, he was still shooting on film, but uh, now we're sort of getting into what is going to be the signature of Soderbergh technique, uh, which is a lot of handheld uh, shooting personally. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of all I have at this point. Oh, one more thing I wanted to mention. I mentioned the Oscars before, and both films were nominated for Best Picture, but neither of them won. They won to, uh, they lost to Gladiator that year, the Ridley Scott, Russell Crowe film. Now, ordinarily, uh, like I said, Steven Soderbergh was nominated for Best Director for both movies. Uh, and when this happens, normally, the conventional wisdom is, is that a director or, you know, whomever will split their vote. People really like him will vote for one of the two pictures, but there won't be enough people voting for one in order to push it out in the lead and, and let it win. The conventional wisdom that was that Ridley Scott would probably get Best Director for Gladiator because he only had the one film that for people to vote for, whereas the other uh, voters for Steven Soderbergh would be split. Well, that didn't happen. Steven Soderbergh won in Best Director for Traffic. He got the majority Best Director votes for that film, and he didn't uh, run off his votes or, or, or whatever you want to call it, split his votes uh, to Aaron Brockovich and lose the lead. Um, so that's pretty amazing. And that cap, and that starts off basically a decade of um, directors who I really admire getting Best Director. Uh, after he won, then it was um, Peter Jackson for uh, uh, Return of the King, although I'm not a fan of that movie. I'm glad he's an Oscar winner now. Um, and uh, Ang Lee for Brokeback Mountain, and uh, Martin Scorsese for uh, The Departed, and the Coen Brothers for No Country for Old Men, and Danny Boyle for Slumdog Millionaire, and uh, Catherine Bigelow for Avatar, a whole bunch of people whose movies have been watching for years and years are now all Best Director Oscar winners, and it sort of started with him. So I was very pleased about that, very pleased. Um, the next two movies, uh, obviously, they're also a good fit to uh, review in pairs, and they will be the next films that Soderbergh made after Traffic, Ocean's Eleven, um, and Ocean's Twelve, which came out uh, a little while later in 2004, but I felt, you know, why not do them both at once? I may mention Ocean's Thirteen, but I'm not going to talk about it in depth because I really don't like that movie very much, okay? But Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Twelve are next. If you want to um, talk about um, your own views on Aaron Brockovich or Traffic, uh, please post a video response. That would be great. If you want to um, do a video on Ocean's Eleven or Ocean's Twelve or both, uh, you know, for next week, that would be great too. I'll post that video on Thursday of next week. So thanks very much for watching. Appreciate it. And have a good one. Later.